the story of our faith is told all around us, as in, like, right in front of us, uh, in the beautiful stained glass window on full display. Um, to be honest, I'm a little jealous of you because you get to look at the stained glass window um, right now and, and during our entire time together, but maybe actually you should be jealous of me because I get to see all of your bright, shining faces. Uh, I don't know, it's probably six to one, half dozen to the other. But um, in the stained glass window, it's very unique. If you follow it around, you see the full life of Jesus on display. All of the major life events of his are right there. You see the birth, the baptism, uh, the teaching, the gathering, uh, the, the communion, the death, the resurrection, the commissioning, and finally, the ascension of Jesus. His entire life, all the major events on full display. But do you see anything else whenever you look at the stained glass? Is that all you see whenever you look at it? Do you only see the life of Jesus, or do you see your life as well? Over the course of the summer, we're going to seek to um, interpret our own lives in light of the life of Jesus. In essence, we're going to be telling our story even as we tell the story of Jesus. And so, the first pain up is, is the birth pain. Um, and that's pain as in P-A-N-E. We should probably just call it the Christmas scene. However, we're just going to kind of skip over that one this week. I'm not really feeling it right now. I don't know about you. I know only 190 days left, so maybe you're into it. But for today, we're going to move past that one into the baptism pain. I want you to notice something about, about this particular pain. In between the, the, um, uh, the Christmas scene and the baptism scene, you've got uh, a couple smaller pains. You would probably have to walk up here uh, in order to be able to fully see and appreciate them, which you are welcome to do at any time. There is some of the beauty of the stained glass that you really can't fully comprehend unless you're like standing right underneath it, looking straight up at it. So I invite you to do that whenever you'd like, although it'd be a little bit awkward to do it right now. Um, all right, so between the Christmas scene and the baptism scene, uh, are a couple smaller scenes, some childhood ones. In this case, just in case you can't quite make out that picture, it is um, a Jesus teaching in the temple, the boy Jesus teaching in the temple, that is, and also uh, learning his father's craft as a young man. Now, there really aren't a lot of stories of, of young Jesus. This is, this is pretty much it. And in addition to that, um, guess how many times we actually have a, a note of, of Jesus learning about carpentry, his father's craft? Really, like zero, zero actual stories. Uh, there, are, there are two times whenever Jesus is linked to his father's craft. One, whenever he's called the carpenter's son, and one, whenever he is called the carpenter. Um, but those are really parallel stories. Uh, about his townspeople trying to figure out where he gets all of this spiritual insight in light of his family craft. All right, so not a lot from his childhood. So back to the baptism scene. You've seen it now in stained glass, so hear it in words. When everyone was being baptized, Jesus also was baptized. While he was praying, heaven opened, and the Holy Spirit came down on him in bodily form like a dove. And there was a voice from heaven, You are my Son, whom I dearly love. In you I find happiness. In the lead-up to this baptism scene, you've got the prophet John speaking on behalf of God, and now you've got the voice of God uh, descending. And what does God speak at baptism? You are my child, whom I dearly love. In you I find happiness. Because God is still speaking to us today. Because God is still saying this exact same thing at baptism. Baptism is our adoption 
into God's family. It's God claiming us as God's very own, telling us that we are deeply and dearly loved. There's this beautiful, beautiful scriptural image of of just how much God loves us and just how much God wants to claim us that's given from the prophet Isaiah. Isaiah writes, But now, says the Lord, the one who created you, Jacob, the one who formed you, Israel, don't fear, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. When through the rivers, they won't sweep over you. When you walk through the fire, you won't be scorched, and flames won't burn you. I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. I have given Egypt as your ransom, Cush and Seba in your place. Because you are precious in my eyes, you are honored, and I love you. I give people in your place and nations in exchange for your life. Don't fear. I am with you. From the east, I'll bring your children. From the west, I'll gather you. I'll say to the north, give them back. And to the south, don't detain them. Bring my sons from far away and my daughters from the end of the earth. Everyone who is called by my name and whom I created for my glory. Whom I have formed and made. This is a picture of the fact that there is no length too great for God to go to find you, to search after you, to choose you as God's very own. But notice something else about this portrait. Notice that that the work of God's redeeming love is already done. The battle's over. The fight's already been won. God's already Decided that God chose you even before you could choose God, which is in part one of the reasons why we in our tradition baptize infants. It's because God is faithful. Even whenever we aren't, God is still faithful. Even whenever we say and do all the wrong things, God is still faithful. Even whenever we completely abandon God, God is still faithful to us. And so, you can wait. You can wait until you've got your whole life figured out and everything is set in place and you completely understand all the mysteries of God in order to be baptized. But guess what? That day ain't coming. So what are you waiting for? Even before we could choose God, God chose us. So... Coming out of the baptism uh, are a couple other pains of stained glass. We are different in light of our baptism, and, and in the case of the stained glass, what the stained glass is showing us are some miracles of Jesus. Again, in this case, Jesus turning water to wine and also healing a blind man. You see, full of the Spirit at his baptism, Jesus is launched from that scene into doing all of these amazing signs and wonders and, and, and healings. So I'm not sure if if that's your story as well, but what difference has baptism made in your life? How are you different in light of your baptism? What difference has it made to you? Uh, In a few moments after Charlie and and Keir are are baptized, I'm going to encourage all of us to remember our baptism. Now, if you were as young as Charlie and Keir are, um, whenever you were baptized, you probably don't actually remember the act, but you can still remember what it means to you. You can remember the fact that at baptism, you are claimed by God. That at baptism, you are initiated into God's family. If you've got a great earthly family, great, wonderful, but if you haven't had such a great one, guess what? You've got a new family, a surrogate family. And guess what? This is why celebrating baptism on Father's Day is such an excellent occasion. Because God the Father, the very best Father that you could ever imagine, claims you on this occasion. So remember your baptism and be thankful.
This is about the, the time whenever I would typically be uh, encouraging you to, to live differently um, in light of this idea, this concept, this scripture. However, instead of doing it right now, what I want to encourage you to do is to listen. As in, like, to really listen in just a few moments whenever, uh, whenever the families come up to celebrate baptism. You see, whenever we baptize infants, we, we ask certain questions of, of the parents, of, of the godparents, to affirm their faith and make certain promises to raise the child in the faith. And then at confirmation, they confirm uh, those promises that their parents and their godparents made. Or if you're an adult and you're baptized, well, you can make those promises for yourself. And then finally, um, if you become a new member of a church, we ask you again just to make sure, just to make really certain the fact that you want to live differently as a result of following Jesus and in light of your baptism. So listen, really listen to these questions as others gather here to answer them. So what do you see? What do you see up there in the stained glass? Do you see the, the stories of Jesus? Do you see um, your own life playing out on, on full display? And this is a legitimate question, by the way. This is like a real question that, that I truly hope that you'll answer. Maybe you'll even tell me throughout the course of our time together because I know that a lot of you have a lot more experience staring at this stained glass than I do. Some of you were probably even part of the group that commissioned this beautiful artwork nearly 60 years ago. So, what do you see? I hope that you'll share it throughout the course of our time together. I hope that we'll be able to share it together throughout the course of our time together. But, if you don't hear anything else today, I want you to hear this. Baptism is love. It's God's claiming of us. It's, it's God telling us just how much he loves us. So, you can buy yourself flowers. You can hold your own hand. You can talk to yourself for hours. You can say things that no one in the back understands. You can take yourself dancing. You can hold your own hand. But... No one can love you like God can. Let's pray. Gracious God, we thank you so much for this visible sign of love at baptism, made tangible, your love on full display as the water flows and washes over us. God, we thank you for this act. And we thank you for Jesus, who taught us to pray, saying, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.